So, I'm here in India where a lot of people really use um, Michel Foucault and his rhetoric, his theories around power and how power uh, manifests itself, how power becomes articulated in the modern days, and particularly, which a lot of us find very useful, is how power becomes invisible. Um, I was recently trying to get through Discipline and Punishment, the birth of the prison, and I know that he's talking about the birth of a prison in, in um, France, um, as he is doing, but what's interesting, and I'll just give a very quick caveat about this, is that the birth of the prisons in America was a seamless shift from the plantations to um, the prison system with all um, of the symbolism carried over from one system of slavery and oppression to the other, seamless. As literal as, literal as some, many, you know, many plantations um, were, they became, they were bought by the state. Like, so literally, like, slave owners made money from the state to um, produce a prison system which enslaved, I mean, largely enslaves people. And there's a prison in, in Louisiana called Angola where the slaves are put on, excuse me, <clears throat> the prisoners are put on display annually in a rodeo. There were people who were living in slave-like conditions, um, even after the chain gang, you know, had been um, sort of put out of public view. And that's what Foucault is talking about here in the first part about the body of the condemned and how that actually goes from, you know, um, he said there, there comes a certain kind of discretion deprived of their visible display of the chains and the, you know, the different ways that people were, people's bodies were held before. And so he said that ultimately this meant the disappearance of the tortured, dismembered, amputated body, symbolically branded on the face or shoulder, exposed, alive or dead to public view. The body as a major target of penal repression disappeared. Now, I find it interesting, and it's important to refer also to the American system of prison that is talked about, and how he totally uses what for me is an apt metaphor for exactly what race, racism was doing and how racism was being constructed in order to uh, justify uh, colonial endeavors at the very same time. Um, you know, so you have this tortured, dismembered, you know, this fragmented body. You think of a slave on a slave auction. You know, that, that, that body is no longer human, but it's this thing. You know, it's, it's strong arms. You know, open your slave. It's, you know, it's a nice set of teeth. It's a, you know, it's a, you know, it's a big dick or it's protruding breasts or, you know, something that makes you look like, we, you know, we can use you on our plantation. Um, there's that. And... I mean, it's important to understand that at this, the time that he's talking about there, that not just colonial endeavors were expanding, but slavery itself, like in bonded, you know, servitude as a system was not, not established in, in a sense, but growing, booming, you know, this was the thing. And so you, you have to ask yourself to what extent was the displacement of horror and terror uh, visited upon the white body and the different ways that that was uh, gendered, you know, violence being still a masculine domain, and the class body, you know, um, of punishment being uh, for crimes that, um, crimes against the elite, you know, stealing, you know, somebody's money, you know, robbing her and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, all, but all kind of ways that the, the, the crime and punishment have always uh, followed social stratification. And so to look at this, and Foucault writing about this and seeing how symbolically he's talking about, you know, branded on the face, you know, like literally, like your black skin. So when, how much of this shift away from the white body, and particularly the white male body, how much of that was allowed because of the growth, the boom, of the mutilation of, you know, the capturing, the Im imprisonment, the, the constant sorts of even just slights that it takes to 
keep a black a black mind in bondage and in servitude and in the intimacy of slavery and serving um, white people. How much of that? How how much does that feed one another? So you know, if there's this black other and this increasing presence and intimate presence of a black other, doesn't one then have to sort of distinguish the white human benevolent self, particularly that white human benevolent um, male who represents the family for the state, you know, all of those things, who leads the state, who is, you know, who is the state, who comes to embody the state, his representation, his, uh, his leadership, all, you know, are the state, um, who's also perpetrating um, the punishment in prisons that, that Foucault has this lengthy book talking about, but then also visits this against the black body. And so um, as a black person, I suppose as black person, but I, would, I, don't, I don't imagine why I would have some sort of black morality that would only apply to me of why this wouldn't seem sort of um, deprived of any racial understanding because it's not just that what he says is true, it's not untrue, but it's incomplete. It's incomplete, and that's why I think um, a gendered race analysis is always necessary. And you'll see the same um, argument um, about um, the closet. You know, looking at you know coming out of the closet and the the, the, the sexualized body of the modern day that also Foucault talks about, that Judith Butler talks about, that Edith um, Sedgwick um, that recently uh, talks about. Those people they also have a very white view of the body. And so I continue to read Foucault, and I, he continues, this very next paragraph. By the end of the 18th and the beginning of the 19th century, the gloomy festival of punishment was dying out. So here and where it flickered momentarily in life, and by this time I was like, literally puking, I'm like, he's like, the, the gloomy festival of punishment was dying out. Again, this is the, the, it's, it's almost like his language is so metaphoric, because you know, the darkness, gloominess that it's it's it, it comes to, you know, embody blackness, um, and therefore the black body, in, you know, sort of comes to represent gloominess, darkness, everything evil, in order that white purity can be visited upon it. Um, he's using this language, and it, it's like he's, he's not saying anything, because he's saying that, that all of this punishment was dying out on the white body. And yet, as I said, we know that at the very same time, the end of the 18th century and the, and the 19th century, this was only shifting in different ways, but just as explicit and just as obvious. And it's shocking, really, that there are departments, thinkers, whose careers have been established based on this kind of this kind of logic, this kind of rhetoric. Um, it's disappointing. When I hear people talk about it, also here in India, and I just think, you know, they look like, you know, like these convicts, these convicts, distinguished by their infamous dress and shaven heads, you know, talking about, you know, prisoners. And I'm just thinking, and, and it's an apt metaphor for race in our society by the way that the, the blackened body, be it the, the, you know, the, the Asian body, the native body, the African body, the, you know, the Islamic body is, is, is marked, and that whiteness is continually trying to make it a spectacle. You know, okay, so race is itself becomes a spectacle. So everything, you know, dark and black and skin, it was still, you know, this, you know centuries later, we're still living that one off. You know, people still bleach in their skin. But then you also have, now you have, um, you, you see the more visibly, the visible Islam, um, you know, a hatred of Islam. And so, you know, they look like this. You know, they look like terrorists. And they, I don't know, like, who looks like what? You know, Obama wore a turban once, so he must be a, you know. I mean, this is the, you know, does this make me a terrorist? I wrap this around my head. You know, that kind of just banal thinking that you can sort of mark or you know, demarcate the blackened, you know, you can black a body out effectively it is what it's doing. And yet you can have an entire rhetoric to politely talk about it and sound very critical at the same time. And that's what Foucault is for me. It's hard to read this stuff. It's hard to it's hard to take them seriously when you know that there's such great denial about who they are as as people. Look around them. Hot and top was 
hot and tired. They had a black woman on display in a cage at the same time. 